specifically here in Forest Hill, especially as I'm to the local 112 precinct. Uh, Ron, if you're here, please stand up. Otherwise, he's probably patrolling now. We also acknowledge Rabbi Akiva Rutenberg, founder and CEO of Emmett Outreach. We have cut down to the life. And thousands um, of lives included men and women as they develop their relations and build the Jewish home. I'd like to call upon Sean Fakir to address um, a local real estate investor, an activist, and no stranger to much of our audience here today, as an executive board member of the Kazakh and as president of the Beth Gabriel Nates Minion, his impact and acts of Pepsi and Arabs among far and wide. It's an honor to call down Shalom. Right thank you, Yaakov Cyril, and uh, thank you everybody for coming over today. Last minute, I know this is the last minute meeting, and uh, we have very good alliance over here. A lot of uh, people in our community. <coughs> I wanted to welcome uh, Congressman Lee Zeldin to our community. Yeah! I know it's a busy time, and uh, we thank you for your time. Um, this is a community, this is actually the center of the Bukharian community over here, um, and we have a very large group of voters, and uh, the, uh, there's, there's literally tens and thousands of constituents. So uh, I would like to say that crime right now is at an all-time high, unfortunately. Um, I've been seeing statistics that have been baffling. And uh, I know Lee has been, it's one of the major things on his agenda. And without a safe city, um, we really have nothing. So safety, I think, is number one. I think it's very, very important to have safety. I know that I was born and raised here in Queens. And personally, I've never seen crime at, at such high, high, high amounts. People are afraid to go onto the subway today. Since the 90s, I haven't even heard of people afraid to go onto the subway. So um, there's a lot of things that need to be changed, and I'm happy to hear the things that he wants to change. Some of the things are like COVID-19 ma COVID mandates he wants to get rid of. And uh, these are things that have totally been out of proportion, I think. And uh, they've demoralized a lot of families and a lot of businesses. So I'm happy to hear what's on his agenda. And uh, I want to thank you for coming again. And he's been gaining a lot of momentum lately, as uh, many of you have been seeing, which, uh, which is Woo! amazing. Yeah. As a Republican, gaining momentum is, uh, is an amazing thing to see. Um, so this, type, this, uh, this race is going to be very, very close. And uh, I think every single person really needs to come out and vote, as we've seen many times previously. Uh, people think that their votes don't count, but literally every vote is going to count. And I can score every single person. You need to vote. Thank you, guys. Thank you, We want to acknowledge the presence of, of Vlad Mashiach, who really helped uh, organize this whole thing, and who's been instrumental in making this gathering. Please stand up so everybody can see him. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Michael Fragan, uh, team strategist who knows communications to business and politics like no other. Michael's dedic a dedicated and solemn member, and thank you, Michael. Please uh, wave. Woo! And uh, we'd like to uh, Doug Hyken rose to fame, serving 35 years in the New York State Assembly for his Brooklyn for his Brooklyn district. <laughs> Since his days here as, a que as Queens, as and I, and you went to Queen's College. Oh, sure. okay. Davis <laughs> also, and I reiterate, always been a proud Jewish American, always voicing um, oh, uh, with his radio show, the Dove Hiken Show. He's uh, since gone on to found Americans Against Anti Semitism, where he calls out Jewish ha ha hatred with a loud and powerful voice and holding their enablers uh, accountable. Doug and his wife, Sh uh, Shani, are longtime dear friends, and, it, and it, um, I'm going to introduce you in a minute, okay? There's one, one other speaker before you, okay? <laughs> and uh, thank you, Lee Zelvin, for coming and, and uh, being here 
to uh, the presence in our our community, and uh, everybody's here to uh, to show to show you that you are the person, you know, that that uh, as many of us have said. So we'd like to take note of uh, the presence of Jada Katz, Executive Director of the Israel Heritage Foundation. Uh, together with uh, Dr. Joe Frege, helps to keep the dreams and wishes of Holocaust survivors alive and where they bring light to the wonders and innovation going on in Eric Israel. Rabbi Katz, please rise. And, um, David Katsia, uh, the name has become synonymous with much of the good work being done in the Bukharian community. My friend um, Ilya, patriarch of the family, is the president of this very shul. On that note, we thank the shul and its administration for opening their doors to us. We will now hear from uh, uh, David and his father. They can both come up, and, and, and they've been, they're very active in real estate developer, developers and a niche in retail development throughout New York. And David and uh, Elliot, please come. Good morning, dear friend. Pleasure to see everybody today. In like 26 years before the just of the school for the people who come from <coughs> ex Soviet Union, Iron Park, and uh, we have all our position and uh, we couldn't make this in the Soviet Union, whatever we have to pray and we need to God to come to this country, three countries. We open the soup of the people and the very active synagogue is very active, active community. Our kids become like the city, some of the kids, like my family, Simcha Moshe, and that people, they all come from the Delgare. The more, more or less they run in the soup, they make a good thing for the community and I hope they continue. But today, special day, we welcome to the Mr. Lee, Berlin. I'd like to I drive in Long Island all over the flag, all over the picture. We wish you good luck for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'd like to mention three of my esteemed writers, Moshe Hill, Izzo Zwerin, and Shafti Zapperstein, who each bring new ideas and foresight into our publication. We each have left many mar uh, markings in both the Jewish and secular world, and I wish uh, each of you luck. So um, New York has become a basket of problems, especially in the aftermath of the pandemic. Congress member Lee Zeldin, an individual poised to correct these issues. You can applaud for Lee Zeldin. Uh, he's become, uh, he's, he's uh, the gubernatorial candidate for the Republican and Conservative Party. Here in the state of New York, we'll hear from the congressman on his vision to correct these problems. And as I said before, uh, our previous assemblyman, Doug Hyken, will say a few words in as introduction. Thank you. I'm not sure you guys have been saying. So, I, I don't know. I need a mic. First of all, I'm absolutely delighted to start my week to, and do it Sunday morning to have the honor, the privilege of introducing the next, with the, with the help of God, the next governor of the state of New York. the Democrats. But I've made it very, very clear. It's not about being a Democrat, about a Republican, independent, or anything else. New York is in trouble. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that. I mean, from crime that is out of control, out of control, from anti-Semitism, attack, attacks upon Jews, out of control, out of control. Jews taking off their yarmulke when they go to Manhattan. Jews hiding their Star of David when they travel in the city because they are afraid. For God's sake, this is not Berlin 1933. 
This is the United States of America. This is New York. And the, the other person, the accidental governor, have you <laughs> seen anything? I'm serious. Anything in the time that she's been there. Is there any plan, is there any plot to deal with the serious problems of New York? And the answer is no. We have, now listen, I'm talking to you, but I'm talking to each one of you to be a captain, to be a general. You need this race. Lee has an opportunity to shake America. America. And he can only do it. Things are looking good, but there's a way to go. And only with individuals like yourself going out to your friends, your neighbors, everyone else that you know, calling people in other boroughs. Your community is amazing, I know that. But there's a lot more that everyone can do. You're not going to get another chance. This is our opportunity. You know, let me just tell you, there are a lot of reasons to vote. To go out and vote, you know, for Lee. A lot of reasons. Let me give you one that's simple. There's a commitment from Congressman Lee Zeldin that he is going to get rid of the district attorney of Manhattan, Brad. <laughs> now, DAs that have more compassion, they have more compassion for the criminals. You know, they have more Rahmanis for the bad guy who's attacking us, who's making our life miserable than for the victims of crime. What else do we need? And Lee Zeldin is committed. You know, the bail reform laws. I mean, I can't even say it. Reform? Reform? On our back? I gotta tell you one thing. Every criminal in New York is voting for the other candidate in the Democratic Party. That I can tell you. Because the Democratic Party has been the best friend of the criminal. Plain and simple. So I don't want to belabor this. It's a long day and every day and every moment counts. But I'm pleading with you. Each one of you. I'm looking at you. I'm looking into your eyes. Every one of you. We can have the greatest victory imaginable in America. I'm not kidding. I'm not exaggerating. I agree. And we're on the cusp of this great victory. You and people like yourselves need to push Lee over the finish line. And I want to tell you something else that means a lot to me. You know, I'm a very, I'm a proud American. Everybody knows that. But I am a proud Jew. Always have been, always will be. Never embarrassed, never ashamed. And I want to tell you something that I've learned speaking to Lee, spending time with him. Lee Zeldin is a very, very proud Jew. But so ladies and gentlemen, with God's help and your help, without you, it does not, it does not happen. I give you the next governor of the state of New York, Lee Zeldin. Yeah. November 8, 2022, a journey that started over a year and a half ago. It took me to every county in the state over and over and over again. And this is the home stretch, the most important part of this race. The, the next 16 days are more important than the last year and a half combined. So goes New York, so goes America. So, falls New York, so falls America, so rises New York, so rises what is the greatest nation in the history of the world. The other 49 states don't have a vote in this race on Tuesday, November 8th. 
But all of you do. I'm in this race to do everything in my power to help save our state. I'm running against someone who is trying to save herself. This is about Republicans and Democrats and independents uniting as New Yorkers to take back our streets, to make life in New York affordable so that your family can stay here. It's about preserving freedom, and improving education. In so many respects, the reasons why our state leads the whole nation in population loss, you all know with crystal clear clarity. <clears throat> but the only way to reverse the population loss is to have someone in office who understands why people are leaving in the first place. And first and foremost, what I'm hearing from New Yorkers is that they don't feel safe on our streets and in our subways. As Assemblyman Heiken pointed out, behaviors have now changed, routines have changed. The hours that you might ride the subway, whether you ride the subway, mm -hmm. when you're waiting on a platform, where you stand. now where you stand, hugging a, a pole or grabbing a guardrail because you're afraid of being pushed in an oncoming subway car, whether or not you wear your yarmulke on the platform and during your travels, what you need is courageous leadership. What you need are elected officials who are recognizing this reality as opposed to trying to tell you to not believe what you see with your own eyes. With the videos and the pictures and the stories, you know what reality is. There are people in power who want you to just look away. They want to look away. That fixes nothing. There's a few points if you're trying to secure our streets and our subways where I feel like this governor's failing. For one, the push in Albany has been to pass more pro-criminal laws. Castle's bail, less is more, raise the age, the HALT Act, the discovery law changes. It all adds up to a woman who's at the Howard Beach subway station, gets attacked by a man who had once killed his own grandparent, violated his parole this past August. His parole officer was unable to be able to keep him detained on that violation. And what was reported, what was cited was, the less is more act. Doesn't get as much coverage as cash and spell. It was the first big bill that Kathy Ockel signed when she became governor. She wasn't elected governor. She was elected lieutenant governor. And now she's filling the remainder of somebody else's term. This is not her term. Now, humbly, if you're in her position, you are out there putting yourself out there, trying to earn the vote, understanding, and communicating that you've never actually been elected governor. But she's walking around like she is an emperor governor, running for a 16th term. That's a foregone conclusion. When I ran in 2016, the first time I ran for re-election to the House of Representatives, I was polling 15, 20, 25 plus points up. I could have done a rose garden strategy, not actually put myself out there to campaign. I agreed to over 20 joint appearances with my opponent. I could have totally ignored her. I could have done one joint appearance or three joint appearances. I could have done five and people say, wow, that's great. You agreed to five joint appearances with your opponent. Tom, how many joint appearances do you have with your opponent in this campaign? She didn't show up, bless me. What, zero? <laughs> no, zero? Zero. Zero? Yeah, so I agreed to over 20 in that race in 2016. 
So Kathy Hochul has decided not to put herself out there for you. It's a lack of respect. I disagree with her on, on certain issues. She says, as a consequence, that means that I'm no longer a New Yorker. She actually said this out loud. And demanded that I get on a bus and move to Florida. Her words, not mine. I did get up, I did, did the next morning get in the car, and I went to Florida, New York. I was endorsed by the mayor of Florida, New York. But I'm not going anywhere. Stay and fight for our city and fight for our state. Since April 1st, the implementation of the HALT Act. Attacks on corrections officers, other prison staff, and inmates have been skyrocketing. Because of raise the age, we have teenagers being used to commit crime after crime after crime after crime. And the mayor of the city of New York has called on the New York State Legislature and Governor to have a special session to amend this law. They won't do it. Because of discovery law changes, I hear from law enforcement struggling to be able to do their job the way that they are trained to do exceptionally. <clears throat> because of Castle Spell, we've heard story after story of catch and release, Two Mexican cartel drug smugglers busted with $1.2 million worth of crystal meth instantly released back out on the street. When we were at Riverdale Jewish Center a year ago, because it was getting vandalized, a few synagogues, we were there on a Thursday. No one was there. We said that the reason why these acts are taking place are not because the person who's committing the act is confident he'll never get caught. It's that he knows when he does get caught, he's going to be instantly released. That was Thursday. On Saturday, he was caught. And he was instantly released. Now, the governor says there's no data to support any of what we're talking about. She's not changing it. She hasn't come out in support of changing any of these. It's not part of her platform. Lock her up. Kathy Hochul says <laughs> that you have to elect her to find out what her position on Castle's bail may be in January. I believe that you deserve to know where we stand on every issue that's important to you before you vote, not after. Yeah. My first action, the first day that I'm in office, is telling the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, that he's going to be removed. <laughs> district Attorney is enforcing the law. If you think DA stands for defense attorney and not district attorney, go be a defense attorney. We don't have recall elections in the state, but what we do have is that when crafting the New York State Constitution, the power was given with a clear purpose to the governor to remove a district attorney who refuses to enforce the law. And Alvin Bragg refuses to enforce all sorts of laws across the board and others he treats as a lesser offense. And I would love for the state legislature to come to the table to work together to fix all these different laws that need to be fixed. But they're saying they won't. As a matter of fact, they go one step further and they'll attack the mayor of New York by name. Danny O'Donnell, Rosie's brother, is a state assemblyman. A white, liberal, Manhattan, Democratic assemblyman went after the black mayor when Mayor Adams said that judges should have discretion to weigh dangerousness. Danny O'Donnell said that dangerousness is code for black. Mm. Now think about what <laughs> Danny O'Donnell was saying. The white liberal Manhattan Democrat Assemblyman was accusing the black mayor of wanting judges to have discretion away dangerousness, suggesting Mayor Adams was racist. <laughs> they, they actually go on the attack. They don't just stonewall him. They attack him. 
So the first day that we're in office, if the legislature is not willing to come to the table, we are going to declare a crime emergency in the state of New York, and we are going to... age and less is more and the discovery law changes and we'll force the state legislature to come to the table to fix it. We also need to start to support strongly our men and women in law enforcement. We need to pass the bill. <laughs> Kathy Hochul decided yesterday to make an announcement on crimes in our subway. It wasn't because of nine murders this year. It wasn't because of felony assaults increasing. It was because the day before she got a bad poll back. And as a matter of fact, she's been getting a lot of bad polls back. On <laughs> Tuesday, November 8th, she's going to get a very bad poll back. There's no press conference at that point. It'll be too late. The next speech that will come out after those polls close is gonna be a concession speech by Kathy Hochul. In her remarks yesterday, she said that we need to remove emotionally disturbed people off of the subway and the streets. I agree. And she says that, she says we know who they are. And she knows all of them. <laughs> and then she says that she, to implement her plan, will have 50 beds. Five zero. Not five zero zero. Not five zero zero zero. Five zero. That's her plan. How out of touch are you with the reality of what is happening? That you think that we are just 50 beds away from solving this issue on our streets. Our men and women in law enforcement are stretched thin. And instead of saying that we need to hire more law enforcement, instead, this law enforcement, which is stretched thin, you, the NYPD has had a lot of retirements this year. People leaving the force who aren't even yet retirement eligible. And instead of saying that we need to hire more NYPD, instead, as stretched thin as they are, she's talking about mandatory force overtime. And to pull them from some other assignments where they are also needed, in order to go on a subway 16 days before an election. Not August 2021 when she comes into the position. Not February 2022 when we're all begging for the additional action. But the day after her first poll comes out that says that she is down and it's just 17 days away from an election, she says 50 beds and mandatory forced overtime with nothing about the need to hire far more NYPD, it's not gonna get the job done. And New Yorkers are smarter than she's giving them credit for. People see right through it. Listen, there's so much to talk about. The American dream, the New York dream, involves home ownership. It's about being able to walk our streets without fear of a, a violent anti-Semitic attack. It's about being a Jewish professor at the City University of New York and feeling welcome as opposed to being pushed out of the profession. It's about being a, a relative of someone who graduates from CUNY School of Law and wanting to go to a commencement address without having to hear from an, an anti-Semite giving a commencement speech. It's about having people in the halls of government who aren't pushing anti-Semitism. It's about having school choice. It's about making sure that we can afford energy in our homes. Yes. That we're reversing the state's ban on the safe extraction of natural gas. That we're approving mm -hmm. new pipeline applications. That we're bringing down taxes and bringing spending mm -hmm. under control. You know all of the stakes here in this moment. But New Yorkers are telling me first and foremost Democrats 
courageous Democrats. Courageous Democrats like Doe Heiken. That is a courageous <laughs> That is a leader. Yesterday I was with Bob Holden. We were in Queens. Tony Nunziata is here. He's the chairman of the, the Queens County Republican Committee. <laughs> we had a rally. Bob Holden is a sitting New York City councilman, Democrat, who put his neck out there to support us. From former State Assemblyman Steve Kaufman in the Bronx, former State Senator, City Councilman Ruben Diaz in the Bronx, and that list goes on. Current and former Democratic elected officials and other Democrat leaders who are saying, you know what? We have to take back our streets. We have to make sure that we are preserving our New York dream. Whether it's opposing congestion pricing, it's protecting yeshiva education, and the list goes on. This is our last stand for New York, and losing is not an option. Very grateful for the invitation. Thankful that all of you are here on this Sunday morning. And I ask that all of you, everywhere, do everything in your power, telling everyone you know, all day, every day, from early in the morning to late at night, taking nothing for granted. So that when you go to sleep on Tuesday, November 8th, you can go to sleep with a big smile, a sigh of relief, and joy knowing that New York is going to be saved, the state will be restored to glory, and that you are all able to confidently declare that you once again will be able to live in the greatest state, in the greatest country in the history of the world. Thank you so much for your support. Please, Alex, or the other one. Here, 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 here,
Stop it. Just give him your time. Snowman. Okay, everybody. So wait, wait, one second, one second. Okay, is everybody Oh, I did go. This is fine. Okay. Sir, I got you. Okay. Okay. I want to make sure you hear me. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Oh, yeah. I will, I will. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. yeah. All right, there we go. There wow. we go. Such a great call. Hey, don't look this way. Look this way, everybody. Okay, good. 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 All right. All right, thank you, everybody.